can't believe this happened. I, yeah. Wait. Or didn't happen, I should say. Chapter 3, Smoke and Mirrors. More lies? So in the last episode, we learned that dark magic always requires the consumption of some other being. Sometimes they're able to do magic, it seems, without any prep. But I'm guessing, like, maybe the butterflies have something to do with that. The butterfly crack. I guess there's something you could do daily or something like that that would allow you to have powers throughout the day. I'm trying to figure out this magical system. It's getting a lot more clear so far this season. They're sort of, like, adding in a lot of details. Which make it way more interesting, honestly. Like, I can't wait to get into more about the, uh, the Arcanum. All I can think about is how I'm gonna tell Ezrin our father is gone. I'm sorry, Callum. I'm so, so sorry. <sighs> I hope he tells them. Otherwise, we're back in the same loop of secrets. But let him sleep, I guess. He's in Rayla's shoes now, kind of. This should be good. <laughs> Oh, I wanted them to talk. Have fun on your little date. <laughs> what happened? What did he do to you? Nothing happened. Good brother. How come you're all weep ridden? <sighs> that is not an emotion, Soren. My point is, are you okay? I'm always here for you to punch someone or whatever you need. That is the sweetest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> as clumsy as it is, the love comes through. I had another weird dream. I was running from that giant hippo. The one made of taffy, remember? I remember. The one whose ears you ate. The baker told him I was jelly filled. As? I was a pastry fugitive, Callum. What does it mean? I wanted to talk to you about... Aw, oh, he's so cute. For some reason. Sometimes there are... changes. You don't expect. Is this the talk about sandwiches? No, 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 no. I was about to say that. You've grown up so much. I'm really proud of you, but when you grow up, sometimes you have to face things you're not ready for. I know everyone's counting on me to teach Zim how to fly, and he's meant to learn it all from a big, strong king of the dragons. Dragon King. I know it'll be tough, but no matter what, you've got us. Me and Rayla, probably Bait, we're all here for you. Thanks, Calum. That means a lot. But I really wish Dad was here. Ezrin, you're a handful. So I tried to do that with Zim. Ezimondius, you're a handful. But he doesn't understand. He doesn't even have hands. I guess I just miss Dad. What's wrong? Tell him. Nothing, Ez. No, tell him. I just really miss him, too. No, tell him. No. What Callum's going through and what Rayla went through before, it's totally understandable. You know, like, it's really, really hard to break bad news to people. And for Rayla, even more so because she felt like she played a hand in it. But, like, just as a viewer, you want things to kind of be reconciled, you know? Because you know they're good people and you know they care about each other. And, like, the longer it drags out, the more it feels unnecessary. You know what I mean? Especially as someone who really enjoys the idea of, like, a group being strong. I want them all to reconcile and be on the same page because that is admirable and it's something to enjoy. I understand why you couldn't tell me. I think maybe I did know. Deep down, I knew. I just hoped it, if I didn't think about it, maybe somehow it, it wouldn't be true. But he's gone. He's really gone. <laughs> so at least there's a good part of it, which is that we get that nice moment from Callum and Rayla. That brings them closer together. But you gotta tell Ezrin. You still gotta tell Ezrin. Don't let this linger. What does it mean? Maybe Soren was also trying to protect our feelings. All right, he definitely seems like a thoughtful, sensitive, feelingsy, protecty kind of guy. He is. He is in his own way. It's just that his love is best expressed through punching. If Callum was in trouble, Soren would definitely punch for him. He'd punch for him real hard. We're leaving today. We can't go home with you. Are you sure? I mean, your dad is going to be really disappointed. <gasps> Soren. Callum, I have something I need to give you. In private. Ooh. In the so, bedroom. Uh, closed door? Open door? What's, uh, what, what are you, uh... Uh, closed is fine. Closed. Good. This is not gonna be what 
you want it to be. That's okay. my letter. So she does have it. You didn't open it? <laughs> Why would I do that? It's for you. Claudia's building major points here. I guess this is goodbye. Interesting. It's surprising to me because my expectations were that Soren would be the one. Soren would be the one to have the feelings, but actually it's Claudia. But I still feel like she must have some kind of game plan because it's not like she's changed her mind. Zim, come on! You loved it in there as an egg! I was wondering if they were going to put him in the backpack. How'd you... Fate, you're not helping! Someone's jealous. Actually, Claudia really understands how important it is to get Zim back to Zadia. Oh, that's... Surprising. In fact, she understands it so well that she and Soren want to come with us. Mm. To every truth, there is a dark shadowed side. Consider the half moon. You already did this. Oh, have I? Hmm. Well, that's really all I've got. Unless you're in need of a spooky <gasps> monster Relatable. or fake food. Hmm? Actually, there is something you can do for me. So in the episode where this lying illusion elf went over her philosophy of reality and truth, because she talks about reality and appearances, right? And that we can only ever get the appearances and we cannot understand the reality beneath. And I guess from that she aspires to make things as unclear as possible and create fake appearances. I don't know. I, I, I don't understand, like, the what's the truth there? Oh, I can't understand the truth. I see. I guess maybe something about the fact that there might be something like objective reality and humans experience of that will always be somewhat subjective or, or limited but i feel like i'm missing something so i'd be really interested in hearing your opinion like what do you guys think about this what is the significance of this idea for this woman it seems like it's just an excuse to lie and make them eat worms does every truth really contain a lie is it like the Tao that can be spoken is not the true Tao? i don't know i'll miss you so much alice you will always be welcome here <laughs> and you too little one Okay, everyone's here now. We can all hit the road. Are Ezrin and Callum real? They didn't say anything. And Ezrin doesn't get a hug? Oh, because she knows. That's why. They're not real. Or are they? What is reality? And when it's time to strike, I'll give the signal. What's the signal? The signal is me attacking <laughs> Me punching. <sighs> he looks so proud of himself. Why? I thought we were friends. Sorry, but no. I'm just a nice guy and people get the wrong idea sometimes. <sighs> You don't speak sarcasm so good, do you? No, I do not. <laughs> they still haven't made any sounds or said any lines. Is she looking at him? Hello? You can't see me. On your side, it's just an ordinary mirror. So it's like the government and webcams. This whole thing is a little bit creepy. This sort of like ups Viren's creepy factor that he's just voyeur spying on this lady. It's inappropriate. I know this feels like a betrayal, but I can't let you go. I have to do what's right. Please don't give me the silent treatment, Callum. It's not the silent treatment. Oops. You're saying they're not real? That's what illusions mean, Soren! <laughs> oh my god, no! That was awful! Nice, the writing Articuno. Damn, she's letting loose. Whoa, it's the uh, the tracker. But wait, wasn't he also sent to capture them? But he was sent by Amaya, right? Well, that sucks. Goodbye, I'll miss you guys. No, Alice and me. Ava. I thought she was part of the journey. I was right. Yeah, you were right. I wish I wasn't. I feel like part of her is happy that she's right. If nothing else, just because nobody believed her. So it's kind of validating. It does suck for Callum, though. Callum's had it rough this episode. Just everything's falling apart for him. He found out that Harrow's gone. Claudia, the girl he has a crush on, just betrayed him. He went to her bedroom and only got a letter. Left Ellis behind. It's tough.
Does she know? She saw the webcam light. So much for the walking adventure. I guess we're flying now. It was nice of her to give them Fifi. All right, so things sort of came to a head between Callum and Claudia and Soren. It's a weird turning point for Callum's character, you know? He's had sort of an innocence before this episode that I feel might have just been changed. He'd been sort of hiding from the aftermath of the attack on King Harrow, and now he's had to face that. And now he's harboring the secret from Ezrin, which is no good. But also that was a huge betrayal, what happened with Claudia. And Soren, that hurts me. I want to believe in Soren's greatness, though I still think the potential for growth is there. I hope that's a thing that happens. Claudia has sort of surprised me because I think the way she was framed in the beginning, or the two of them were framed in the beginning, Soren was sort of the one independent of the father and the evil. He's just sort of like a jock, right? And he likes he likes Callum. Claudia was sort of depicted more as the one who's been indoctrinated into Viren's way. But now we see Claudia as the one who has conflict. I didn't realize how much she cared about Callum. I can't help but wonder if the writers changed course on that a little bit. Because Soren was definitely the one set up to be the one who was really kind and caring, with like, you know, the hand on the shoulder during the attack and the training scene, and arguing with his father when Viren was being antagonistic towards Callum, saying he's the prince, you know? So we'll just have to see where it goes. One thing that's sort of unsatisfying about these episodes is I really just want people to communicate. You know, I want the conversation to happen. I think tension works best between characters when conflict arises from their different principles, but their principles are based on things we like about them, you know? But like, the fact that everyone's so secretive and lying, it's sort of hard to connect to that motivation. We can all understand on some level why Rayla and Callum didn't want to talk about Harrow's death, but it almost feels like it would be just better in every way if people were more upfront. Surely there's enough out there in the world that would create the conflict for the characters to overcome and grow without there sort of being this tension built on artifice and misunderstanding between characters, if that makes sense. But I will say that overall season two has been much better in terms of pacing. It's really kind of interesting because in season one, right, we had like one episode per day of their lives and each day brought a different adventure. So far in season three, they basically spent three days in the in the moon sanctuary or whatever. Somehow it ended up being more exciting than their adventure because of all the character play, because of all the things that could happen and the conversations and the Claudia and Callum will they won't they and the moon elf and her lies and also her philosophy, I guess. But now that we're back on the road, I'm excited to see if that feeling can continue, if that pacing can continue. Also, the action's a lot better, I've noticed. The, the sequences are cool. But anyway, that's the end of season two, episode three. I'll see you very soon for episode four.